Welcome to the MasterCard Player of the Week interview. I am very happy to be joined by Summit. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. So I guess the first question I wanted to ask is, this is a return to form for Team Liquid and also a return to form for you individually because you won a lot of Player of the Weeks when you were here previously right. in North America. So I guess, what is going right for you? What has been the main difference going into summer as opposed to spring? Since the last time we saw you, you were actually in LCS and then went to FPX in the LPL uh, and then returned. Was there anything specifically that you feel like you learned while on FPX that you could bring here to NA? Or like, how did you improve as a player over that time? LPL이 교전 집중력이 좋아가지고 싸움, 스킬샷 그런 거에 대해서 많이 연구를 하고 가져왔던 것 같아요. What was your decision around returning to North America to play for this team, Liquid team specifically? 호 선수가 있었고 좀 작년부터 같이 하고 싶다는 생각을 했고 믿고 의지할 팀원이 있어서 온것 같아요. With obviously last split was very rough for the team overall. Um, in addition to your increased practice. What do you think is working better this summer as opposed to spring? Because everything looks better, like especially your mid and late game is a lot better. So I guess what changed on the team? 있었던 일들은 티는 안 나지만 복합적으로 많은데 뭐 감독님이 바뀌기도 했고 어, 연습 방향이 좀 바뀌기도 했는데 뱀픽 스타일도 되게 좋아졌고 연습 방향도 좋아져서 그런 부분이 다 합쳐져서 이런 결과가 나왔어 나온 것 같아요. And then for you specifically as a player, obviously you're known for being an incredible carry top lane player. When you were here and previously won MVP, it was a lot around that. But on this Team Liquid team, they've asked you to be a carry, but they've also asked you to play tanks and be more of a, a team member. So how do you think you've grown individually as a player? And then you still have a lot of fans here in North America. So having won week one summer player of the week, is there anything you'd like to say to them, either in Korean or in English? I'm satisfied so far, uh, but I want more win. Thank you for cheering to us. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, congratulations again. Thank and you. That is it. That's Summit. Thank you for joining me. Hi. Hello, it's me again. Um, we've talked a lot about how TL's team fighting has improved from last split. Uh, so I'm actually going to do a little Telestrator breakdown as to how that's happened. So previously, I feel like initially in this team fight setup, um, Yon actually died here when they were trying to push down here. So he is gone. Um, but the most important thing going into this fight is that they actually already, move that out of the way. Um, they actually already know that Closer is down here and obviously he does not have TP as a jungler. Previously, I feel like if this had been a setup for TL before, you know, Summit would have already somehow, uh, like he's backing back here. But he would have TP'd, I don't know, randomly over here. They somehow would have gone in before he was ready. Um, but I think the thing that it comes down to in terms of what has actually improved with Team Liquid's team fighting is just their timing and knowledge of what they can do, right? So I already talked about how Closer cannot join up for this fight. Additionally, we already had a core joining up here. Summit has already TP'd in here and he's gonna be able to join. And then the most important thing is also that they're all going in together, right? So as soon as Summit recognizes that he can immediately jump onto Busio here, the rest of the team is already going in and they're well coordinated. One of the problems with TL's team fighting previously was that, again, when one of them would go in, the rest would not follow or they would not be in positions to follow. They would not have a setup like this 
where they knew that a member could not join on the map. So even though Jan was not alive for this fight, it was still a 4v4 and they already knew that with Summit coming in uh, because Closer could not respond. So it's just kind of, it's small things, but it's really important. And it's something that we saw TL really falter on in spring that they've sh seemed to have shored up now uh, and is part along with their already strong early game that we saw one of the reasons why um, they're doing so well thus far. Uh, so I'll see what you guys think. Uh, they're about to take to the rift. I'll see you then. What is up, y'all? Bienvenidos. We've got a special introduction from Team Liquid because it's Core JJ's birthday. And we got some birthday gifts for the man in the support role. And all the Team Liquid guys are giving him a warm birthday welcome as they head into the studio. Love it. The biggest fans <laughs> right there on his own team. Core JJ is also just such a good leader, you know, in game and out of game for the Academy team too. Mm -hmm. Always helping promote those guys, always practicing so much with those guys. So nice to see the squad uh, so closely knit. I mean, everyone is helping him be propped up this season. And but it, this is a great start for Team Liquid so far in the summer, because when we looked back at this roster and what the potential was going to be from spring, it didn't live up to those expectations. One change, kept the same whole roster, and it's a 5-0, or not quite a 5-0 start, 4-0. <laughs> yeah. I'm jumping they, ahead of the gun if, here. If they want to keep pace with Cloud9, who are the team that you know Team Liquid are very clearly rivals with right now at the very top, both of them undefeated. Cloud9 just came off that stomp of a win where they still picked Zeri Yumi after it was nerfed. Uh, and so Team Liquid, yes, their next big goal is to complete the 5-0, keep that pace with Cloud9 at the very top of the table so that when we see these two teams meet next week, it will truly be a clash of the number one teams of the LCS at the top of the table. And we'll see about that undefeated status. Right. Dignitas here, they want to change that strategy. Now, Dignitas, you know, one of the rosters that is looking to make a remarkable difference compared to their abysmal spring split. They've already gotten one win earlier on in the summer. I, I think we have to give a lot of credit <laughs> to their new top laner, Rich, who a lot of people behind the scenes, I know we tried not to put a lot of investment into scrim bucks here, Kobe, but from what we've heard, Rich is mo a monster in these scrims and, and, and it shows up in that one game. All right, so in the picks and bans here, taking out the Azir that Jensen has had a huge, huge preference for, and LeBlanc Static Shiv is certainly just OP right now. And it's pretty funny, in the last few days even, the solo queue ban rate for Diamond and Up of LeBlanc went from 10% normally up to over 50% because of Static Shiv, uh, because Everyone's of all the publicity it that it's getting and all of the competitive uh, games that we've seen. So love to see that one. Ban Dubway along with the Nico, the, the three premier mid laners here and Team Liquid clearly targeting Jensen as the one that Dignitas usually try and invest in as their late game insurance policy. Now, Kobe, we've seen a lot of REL counterpick situations happen later on in the draft phase. I think this is the first time we've seen a REL being picked the very first thing in the draft here for Dignitas. Yeah, I mean, the, multiple supports talking about it. When they did the changes to try and help Rel be a jungler, they actually just made Rel a way better support. And it's it's so much easier to pick now who he was talking about. He could pick it whenever he wants as well. Dignitas feel the same here for Diamond. The engaged potential on this champion is now through the roofs. Moving the stun over the to the Q and just having the E as the extra speed up there um, really does give these big wombo combo possibility setups for the champion. That being said, Annie from the mid lane, just flash and go with the tippers is equally as impressive of an AOE initiation Team Liquid answer with. That's just consistent, right? You get a point and click stun if you want one target lockdown or the AOE tippers lockdown, as you already pointed out. I'm gonna make a quick prediction here. I know we have the Zaya here for Yawn and more than likely the Rakan will be the, the pair up. If they can make it through the second part of the draft phase, Alistar has been one of the things that has made Rel's life awful in the past. Maybe Core JJ brings it out again today, but we're gonna have to see if that comes true for Dignitas. Thinking about the Wukong, but it's gonna be Sejuani for Santorin instead. More, more initiation here. The one-two punch, Sejuani and Rel. So Dignitas have fully set front line. Just looking at, do we want to match Marksman now? Uh, pick up something to go with the Rel or 
would you want to let it drop and grab uh, one of the blind pick Jensen champions? It looks like they really Ooh. value that Jensen priority with the three mid lane bans against him. Going to the old classic, the most played in competitive, Oriana. Has anyone else picked Oriana this summer split? I don't think so. Nah, it's been a very short summer split so far, so I'm going to go with no as well. <laughs> uh, but you get uh, you get more uh, AoE with your AoE. So uh, Dignitas definitely investing big Dang. in this uh, team fight combination. And alas, the lovers duo will not be broken up. No Alistar here for Team Liquid, but we're moving on to the second ban phase. You already pointed out multiple tools of initiation for Dignitas. You have great follow-up with the Shockwave now. They need to pick up a, a Marksman for Tomo. He's been great on things like the Aphelios in the past before that can pair greatly well where all the lockdown is made for him and then he just layers down the Infernum Gun and the Moonlight Vigil for splash AoE damage. Yeah, Felios definitely very highly prized right now, but also the Tristana and the Samira, always really good pairings with the Rel. We'll see what type of uh, combo they do want to go with. Jungles will be the ban here versus Pioshek, who has been absolutely killing it in summer on Team Liquid. The Lee Sin was probably his single best game, but he has had a lot of much, much better games this split than previous seasons. So definitely deserved here with the focus after the second round. Yeah, the overall, I guess you want to go to baseball terms, like uh, hitting record is just like through the roof for Pioshek in summer versus what he had in spring. Another top lane blind pick ban from Team Liquid against Thingatoss. This tells me that they're going to want to be- Kong maybe? Yeah, setting up Summit for that counter pick. And so that means Pioshek is going to be forced to pick a jungler answer in response. Wukong would be a good ban from Dignitas. Malphite, interesting. All right, they don't care too much more about the deep jungle pool here for Pioshek. As soon as you ban out the Kindred, that's enough. <laughs> Sorry, they don't care about anything else. But the Lee Sin and Vi also following suit, so let's get the reveal. Gonna have to be a blind for Summit this time around. They themselves ban Renekton, which is one of the premier blinds at the moment. Uh, Summit, you, you heard in that little interview no that he just did, uh, that's practicing the tanks made him a much more versatile player and brought into his view of the game. They are laughing about it there. So definitely some some Shivana memes, maybe some Shivana meme scrim uh, data that they were laughing about with the hover over. She won't get locked in quite yet. So mm -hmm. you can still have some hope. <laughs> I don't know if we'll be seeing uh, Shivana today unless the, the top lane matchup is good for Summit. The Aphelios, as we called it before, does get locked in for Tomo. And now Rich forced to blind pick a top lane into whatever Summit chooses. There's plenty of initiation, so uh, Rich can go for something that is a little more carry oriented, a little more split push oriented. In the past, he's already gone to Cassante when no other options are available and it'll look like that's just going to be the pickup for Rich. <laughs> I hope that they're at least like practicing these hovers and stuff that, that are much more interesting. You know, little Shivana in your life, little Shen in your life. Yeah. Spicing the up uh, in the draft here in LCS. Not going to make it through just yet. Okay. Some previews for next uh, tomorrow or next week, possibly. Maybe, maybe. But in the end, uh, I believe the NAR should be the lock here uh, for Summit. Much, much more stable here. And it is a classic Summit champion. Yes, sir. You will remember from the MVP split that he had upon arrival. And it was Big Jace, Big Nar. We'll see if he can make it happen versus Rich's Cassante because you mentioned the star power of Rich for Dingtoss. That, that has been a player that people have quickly been drawn to since his very recent addition to the team. And Cassante is the champion that he has had the success with. It yeah. is those Cassante games that got him that focus. And while the, the win records for these two teams are very contrasting, from what people say about these two top laners in scrims, once again, scrim bucks, you know, so take it with a grain of salt, that this is potentially a matchup between the two best top laners in the league, just based on how well they're laning, how well they carry themselves in team fighting. Summit, classic NAR pick, whereas with Rich Cassante, it's one of the, the one few game that Dignitas was able to take away this split so far off of a monstrous team fighting performance on that pick as we're going to head to the rift between these two team liquid can they carry this momentum can they finish the day five and zero or will dignitas play spoiler to another top team 
Well, they certainly have been smashing. The only difference from spring to summer now is they continued smashing the early game, but then they also kill the Nexus <laughs> afterwards. They've really cleaned up their, their team fighting for the mid game and been able to rack up the wins here in summer. Team Liquid, can they keep the clean games coming? Yeah, the nice thing for a dub for Team Liquid is that it would be an, an, another additional present for Core JJ's birthday, so. I already got the statue, what more could you need? <laughs> a 20 minute victory. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, looks like we have one sweeper for the start here with Core JJ himself. Birthday boy sweeper action ready. See if they try and use it early on. Actually, a pretty defensive rune setups here or summoner spell setup for Team Liquid's bot lane. Heal for Core JJ, no exhaust, no ignite for the early all in, whereas Tomo and Diamond are, are equipped to go for the early aggressive take. Try to see if they can get that snowball rolling. Yeah, Xyricon played defense in a lot of the early matchups, especially into Rel. See if Diamond uh, and Tomo can make something happen. Rel has been front and center with a lot of the best support games that we have had so far in summer in the LCS. Definitely has a lot of kill power here, especially if you've got junglers pathing down. So Centauri gonna start on the top side and go bottom, as should 90% of junglers in 100% <laughs> of their games. Uh, always look bottom to try and get your advantages there, especially if you've got a rel down there to make it spicy. Meanwhile, Yoshik is actually going the opposite direction up towards the forbidden top lane. <laughs> you know what? One of the changes that Team Liquid has made is actually playing more towards the summit. Because if you go back and watch a lot of the spring VODs, I mean, summit has these huge laning leads, but Pioshik never got a really chance to accentuate it or snowball it. One of the few changes that Team Liquid has made, Summit has been not only just as monstrous in laning before, but Pioshik is there to just really hit the last nail in the coffin for some of these lane matchups. Yeah, and he has hammered those nails all the way in in a lot of the cases, uh, really snowballing them effectively. A lot of very good ganks coming out from him, as we said, in summer. And it should just be full clear for both junglers, opposite directions. Bottom side pushing in here for Dignitas off the early stages from Aphelios Rel. It's always so nice with this champ getting to start with the green-red combination. And Rel with that Ignite that you mentioned, always with that threat. So they push it in. Meanwhile, top side, similar things here for Rich, though he does get a little bit low and he knows opposite jungler pressure might make him play a little bit more defensively. Yeah, he's already put a decent ward to cover the river entrance for Pioshik. So in order for Pioshik to make this gank work, if he wants to look for something, he would have to come through lane. But the lane is already somewhat pushed on Summit's side. So it's, I don't think it's happening. I think Pioshik is just gonna finish these Krugs, look for Top Crab, and then probably go for a reset. Maybe a mid-game, or uh, mid-game hunger here. See bot side action. A little bit of a knock up here, and just trading. Ah, that's uh, that goes towards Team Liquid's way as Diamond is the one that does not receive the, the bountiful end of that trade. It looks like they're just trying to get that shove in, trading HPs to make sure that the crash can happen and they're not stuck frozen under the tower. All right, and Santorin gets a deep ward here, moving up on the Sejuani after the clear as well. Love that one behind mid lane. You had you saw that stats pop up on Jensen's Orianna. Uh-oh, as he might get ganked. Pioshik and Viz, can he get in range for the E? Not quite. Jensen just walks away. Huge avoidance <laughs> on that gank. Look at the move. That's Rafa. a Jensen Orianna. Any other champion, he would have died right there. I mean, uh, the, whole, the whole point is that this is his most played champion by far in competitive. It's not even close. It's 32 games more than the next closest, uh, which is Azir. 92 games for Jensen all time, and a 73% win rate with the champion as well. Oh my goodness. So uh, he hasn't played it a lot on Dig. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Well, now they're giving him a chance to. <laughs> and Diamond there, a uh, little bit of a shout out, tanked a lot of the minion wave damage to maintain that freeze. So Tomo just gets to walk up and say, wow, this is, well, this is nice. It's a hugely stacked wave and I can at least catch a majority of it. And so far, it's been a quiet early game. No, no grudge matches. That, that, that might be the next game you know, between FlyQuest and EG. Make sure y'all are sticking around for that one. That's gonna be a banger. 
good versus evil. Tomo here, uh, though, does have the marginal CS lead, picking up the extra six here in front of the tower. So is kind of nice for him when the 1v1 as the supports are on their roam timers. And both supports, roam timers do go mid, but it looks like with poor JJ getting there first, he's gonna get the deeper ward. Rich should be able to walk away, no problem. And really the support chase is, is what I'm looking at here. Cause Core JJ got in there first to get the deeper ward, but Diamond, see if he actually finds it. He's not finding it ward right now. Fight. He, he's he, gonna get it. Oh. He's busy trading Lance with a Feather Quill at the moment. As Santorin committing the flash onto Harry, that's flash for flash. Next time he rolls around mid lane, that could be Harry going down. Definitely always valuable to trade your flash as you're approaching towards level six as a Sejuani. Get the flash off the Annie. Job number one here for Santorin, checklist complete. Job number two, go get your level six and then come throw it at the Annie that has no flash. And also maybe work around the shield timing because uh, the speed up from the Annie shield can give enough speed to dodge, especially with tier two boots. Yep. So uh, can make you look a little bit silly. Uh, maybe if they, you know, communicate there with Jensen, burn, burn the Annie shield first, makes it easier to land your ultimate. Otherwise, just Q drifting out of Fog of War and catching him by surprise is going to be the ticket for our first blood in this game. While there hasn't been any kills, uh, there's been a lot of action just in the bot lane of how Diamond is forcing Yawn to not have the greatest of recall timers. He's been stopped like two or three times so far, and they've caught waves. Already, it's been a better back timer for Tomo so far. I don't imagine that it's going to result in anything great anytime soon, but if they can get... Nah, poor JJ should be fine. And Yawn, once again, I mean, th these guys don't get the back ever. Yeah, Diamond chasing him out here. And should be the, the push out then advantage for Dignitas bottom lane. As Yan and Core JJ stuck in river, Tomo gonna be able to push that one up while Santorin smite fights with Pioshik. Here we go. 1200, 900, the 600 smite. Oh, Santorin's the one that wins out on top of it. And then all out from Rich forces Summit to be separated momentarily from Pioshik. And Santorin, does he have, he doesn't have Glacial Prison yet, but they have enough damage. They take him out for first blood. And Dignitas are gonna try to run Pioshik down. He gets Glacial Prison, forces Pioshik to flash away. Oh, that dang Annie shield speed up too. <laughs> but they got the first blood, Rafa. They got the first blood. That top lane matchup you're hyping up. Rich versus Summit. Rich brings Summit over to the jungle smite fight to make it the 2v2 and Santorin, Big burst damage there. Sejuani plus uh, the Cassante stack up that stun, burst down Summit, and they take down the famed Summit Nar. Okay, Jensen not committing the flash quite yet. They layer down the Annie stun, but the damage, Jensen is super confident in knowing that it's not gonna be enough to take him down. All right, with that too, that chunk, they're trying to use the pressure here. Core JJ roams mid, Harry uses his ultimate to start the Rift Herald. And I think that's actually still really worth it. You get a big chunk on Jensen. That's a health lead push out on mid lane. Core JJ is here on his support, uh, second support roam timer. And so picking up the Rift Herald could go a long ways in getting this early game back on track for Team Liquid, despite that first blood going over to Dignitas. Yeah, with this trade, Santorin is trying to get the jump on the first dragon since neither team has taken it as well. He has the support of Diamond. He has the push from Tomos for pri priority from the bottom lane. So this should just be an objective trade overall. Yeah. I always really like getting the Rift Held end of that trade for the, the extra gold on your jungler Absolutely. and the pushing power. But we'll see if he can actually use it. Pioshik does have ultimate, but no flash, as you mentioned in the last one. And taking the flash off of Wukong does, you know, greatly diminish that possibility of actually getting the kill with your level six. And even though Santorin did whiff that first Sejuani ultimate or did get uh, flashed, well, here's another look at the ultimate from Rich. Really good angle from him to bring Summit so far into Dignitas territory with that Cassante ultimate. Good flash repositioning from him. And then guess what? My jungler Sejuani, Q right in with the W2 damage. And then he forces the flash out of Yoshik. And I was about to say that ultimate cooldown for Sejuani is back up already yep. from forcing the flash off of Wukong. Now he's ready for play number two. Both top laners exchanging ultimates here. Summit 
Doesn't look like he's the one that is receiving the, the beneficial end of that trade. Rich winning out on that one. And now that he's back to mini form, he has to back off. Yeah, respect the Cassante. Rich Cassante, definitely been his best champion for him and for Dignitas overall, even I would say so far this split. So also not disappointing early on in this game. See if they can actually play off of it though. It is a pretty small gold lead there for Dignitas, but uh, Dragon picked up as well. And we'll see what they can do about this next round because Pioshik does have the Rift Herald in inventory as well. And Rich's ultimate is not back up. Someone can't get in range in mega form to scoop him back towards the enemy team. It looks like Pioshik and Core JJ are not going to get much off of it unless if they just want to commit the crash. But now Yawn is left to his lonesome on the bottom side of the map. He has Featherstorm to play with and the teleport is coming in. He will get reinforcements from Harry and they outplay it. They take out Santorin and now Diamond's on the run. Yawn and Harry working together to keep themselves alive. Yawn with the flash on the blade collar gets the root under the tower. Harry arrives and delivers the bear. Team Liquid, they also used the crash of the Rift Hill to get a bunch of turret plates on top side. While they didn't kill the Cassante, they forced him out. Harry's chasing for more. Got to be a little careful here. Oh, and Tomo just wanting to greet Red for the White. kill on the Harry. White. Oh, maybe he might have enough life steal. It's a one for one trade. And now this game is starting to heat up. <laughs> this is what we like to see. Full all-in combat versus Red White Ophelios getting real nice and cozy there. They end up both going down in the end as Core JJ arrived to try and peel for him with the Rakan ultimate. And now we're even looking mid. I kind of love when the pace of the game gets so quick like this with all the action because then they lose track of the roamers and you can see it bleed over into the other, other lanes uh, trying to push up here. So looks like we are going to get a recall and go right into the replay uh, of the blade collar here from Jan, but look at it. He saves his ultimate, dodges the Sejuani, then uses it here as Santorin is tanking turret. Blade Collar flashes over to make sure he gets the root. Also dodges the Sejuani ultimate that came through. Did he and cleanse the stun from Diamond as well on top of it? And allowed Harry. I didn't check that one. I believe so. I'll go with yes. <laughs> Harry chases down. There's the cleanse from Tomo this time around. And you know how this one ends, the one for one. Chakram's from Aphelios, giving him the extra deeps to squeeze one more. Here we go. Oh, but Diamond has flash advantage on a flashless yawn here. The Magnus Storm and the crash down isn't enough damage. They should be able to take him oh. out. And Tomo gives him the silencing blow. Core JJ is now on the run. The Moonlight Vigil is still available, but Core JJ answers with a flash to get out alive. All right. Just the one kill this time around. Looks like we're going to calm down. Wukong's still moving around behind them, but he was seen. Looks like he's still gonna go for it. They know he's here though. Hey, he's spotted. And Pioshik does have Flash and Cyclone. And uh, all Diamond has to do is just buy time for Tomo to get out. He doesn't have any summoner spells. A second cast of Cyclone oh. and the bonk on the back end of it. My goodness, that thing still does damage. Yeah, that's a completed Divine Sunder. Even though they nerfed the Divine Sunder. Didn't look like it. <laughs> still does damage, bonk on the head, get one back. So bottom lane keeps on going blow for blow there. This time around, the Wukong even sighted on those wards. They thought they could outplay it. They thought they could peel him. But you can't stop the Cyclone. That's right. Well, so far, it's still an even game. The gold lead is pretty much negligible at this point. And Summit, despite uh, the early pressure from Rich and Santorin in that top lane skirmish, He's still getting the better end in terms of this pressure on the plates, still pushing Rich into the end. And as once we get into the mid game where these one item spikes are coming in, Divine Sunder already completed for Pioche, a Triforce for Summit. I believe that is where a lot of Team Liquid's power is really going to shine as they fight over the next couple of objectives. Yeah, let's see if it actually explodes here at the Dragon too. Rich does not have his teleport ready. A little bit of a desync on the cooldowns here and with Summit, chunking him down to 50% HP. This could be Team Liquid trying to use that small window and difference of cooldowns, but it looks like Dignitas are just gonna stall it out until that thing lines up. Rich goes back, he heals up. His cooldown for teleport is almost up as well. So everything has been stabilized here and they just continue fighting over the vision on the setup. Jensen now level 11 on the Orianna. So starting to have some power behind that shockwave. 
The rank one is is pretty pitiful, but rank two here definitely starts to get a lot more impressive, especially if Santorin can start it out. Now, right now, uh, Mega just timed out for Summit, so Team Liquid don't want to really start a fight until he can work his way back up. Teleport is available for Rich. If he's ever outside of Vision from Summit, Team Liquid would have to back off of a major fight. But right now, they're just trying to look for bot lane prior to set up for that upcoming dragon. All right, Diamond wants some. Cyclone on a Diamond. They have Summit TPing early. He's not Mega, but he is mini form. We'll see how much damage he can do on the left side of this flank. Toma's completely separated, but now they're pincering in into this tiny choke point. Summit is forced to hop away and flash. Can he get out alive? The heal will keep himself a little bit of movement speed, but Dignitas should be able to run him down unless he gets a couple more auto attacks. He's running away in. Rich goes down the Team Liquid's back. Let now Summit goes Mega. He throws Santorin into the wall. That's the double kill for Yawn. And Team Liquid turn this fight around. The Shockwave gets a little bit of damage on the back, but Team Liquid still walk out the better of the at one. Oh, Summit kiting them with the mini NAR fleet footwork into hyper proc speed. And he kites them through the alcove. They really wanted that tasty morsel. They couldn't finish off the mini NAR though. They chase them into their own deaths. And Team Liquid bring down the hammer. See about the reset for the dragon though, because they got all the kills, but instantly went for the reset to go by. And now we got the reset for Dragon. This is going to be even harder of a team fight for Dignitas to fight if they actually come back. Uh, Rich at least has ultimate, but he is really the only one for Dig. So I really... Okay, Harry's coming from base, though. And this looks difficult for Dignitas. To, I mean, Tomo is working with one summoner spell. The Dragon has yeah. already been bursted out. And Team Liquid, they just have to uh, walk on out. Dignitas is going to try to catch them. Well, they, they want to delay for mid turret because they've got White Gun Aphelios on mid turret. Yeah, there you go. So they just want to delay them in the river, yeah. allow Tomo with the White Gun, finish off the turret. They do get that. Harry. Not enough speed here to chase down Harry, but they do at least get one trade in objectives. And the mid turret does really open up the deeper wards here around your jungle camps to start trying to get more. Centaurin really wants the Rift Herald though. I'm genuinely surprised at how close this game has been as Santorin looks for the Glacial Prison. Jan trades it with the Featherstorm. That's ult for ult. Shockwave not quite used yet. They're holding this position. Pioshik opens up with Cyclone toward JJ right on top of Tomo. Charmed up with the quickness. The grand entrance means that he ain't going nowhere. And Team Liquid pick up the K80 carry of Dignitas. All right, I want the spectator replay of that. I know it's difficult when we make requests like this, but the spectator replay of that from Harry's vision because Tomo was moving up on a control ward but then he shot out his sniper Q and his ultimate. So Harry saw where those came from and then nailed him with the Annie's Tibber and they completely blew him up while he was in that brush. Mm. I, I wanna check if he gave them vision by hitting or if he was able to just get him from knowing the location of the origin of the skill shot. Oh, thank you, observers. Ask and you shall receive, Kobe. So there is a control ward that gets placed in this side brush. There it is. Moves on out. Oh, oh we didn't we get to see the good part. It we was didn't too even long. get the chance to see <laughs> but it. But thank you for trying. Thank you for trying, though. Thank you for trying. Shout out to the observers. They were giving us the, the good juice. As Summit and Rich were all out fighting each other, making sure that Harry could push in this bottom side of the map. And as we were saying before, Kobe, this has been so far one of the closest games we've had of the day, let alone the split, because yeah. A, a general narrative we're seeing is that a lot of these games are just turning into big stocks. It, they certainly are, but uh, I, I prefer these ones. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I definitely prefer these ones, but I think it just comes down to the fact that both Tomo and Yawn are pretty much even in terms of goal acceleration. Because uh, when I was talking to a lot of players, like why the games are feeling like big stomps, it's because as soon as one AD carry gets accelerated, it just seems over for the other team. Yeah, these ones definitely much more close, especially with Dig being able to get this tower and further cut that gold lead down, uh, chop away a little bit at these advantages that Team Liquid have been able to get. So we'll still keep track. Tomo now does have both of the summer spells as well. We'll be much more safe than the previous explosion that we just caught. Meanwhile, the bottom side kind of priority was traded there for Team Liquid. They took that opportunity. They got some deep wards in the red quadrant of the jungle. And with the Rift Trail, they will be able to secure mid tower as well. Nice moves here from Team Liquid. 
But props to Dignitas for maintaining a solid defense for the first 19 minutes of the game. Usually Team Liquid, they have been finding early game leads and just running away with the game. I mean, we, we literally came off of a the fastest win or one of the fastest wins in the LCS. I, I think that uh, that title got taken by Cloud9 recently, but, you know, Team Liquid answering with that Pioshik Lee Sin game. And this one, it's been a lot more difficult for them to actually close out against Dignitas. Yeah, they're they're not running away with it, but they are kind of walking away while holding it. <laughs> they're walking away with it a little bit more slowly. We'll see about the Rakan, Wukong, any true combination. We haven't seen that real, you know, synergy come together quite yet. Yep. That next big one. Uh, is gonna be a really big determining factor. You know, Annie, when you're able to give the shield uh, for the movement speed for the Wukong and Rakan's gets that snap engaged, uh, it can be over in the blink of an eye. Meanwhile, Dignitas, we, we kept on in Champ Select trying to hype up their big AoE combo as well. And we'll see if they can actually get it started there. Santorin, Sejuani ult into Diamond Engage. Gotta do the setup work first though. You know, you can't just jump to the big Wombo combo. Got to get your wards in place, control the fog of war. Yeah. Give you a better chance, more angles to go for it with. Also got to make sure that it's at the right time as well. If you get a big pick, but there's no objective to take off the back end, and then it's only a small win. You want to make sure that these engages and picks count. Plus, it's going to be a lot more difficult to pull it off on, on Yan. The Zaya, like the counter engage AD carry. Core JJ's flanking around here too on the Rakan, but it looks like Rich is going to mark him. See on the mini map. Yeah, Core JJ is forced out. No fancy flanking from the Rakan here. We've seen it in past games before, but it looks like he's going to have to go through the front door on this one. Yawn is currently separated away from the rest of the pack. Rich is not letting him go. Summit is now coming on the left side of the flank. Rich is just dedicating his job to keeping Yawn out of this fight. So let's see how much damage can Team Liquid can get without Yawn. And it looks like they're just doing a damn good job already. Not really needing Yawn as he finally flashes in for the cleanup. They eviscerate Dignitas. Poor JJ sees the angle. He goes straight in and then Summit follows. With just the last little bit of his Meganar, he flashes onto Jensen and Tomo. He got both of them with the ultimate against the wall. And that's going to be the win for Team Liquid in the team fight. It's going to be the Baron. Here's how it all starts. Core JJ is going to go first. He gets the Rakan ultimate. He gets the flash out. So then someone's like, okay, no flash on Tomo. I see them both against the wall. Jensen and Tomo both carries, nails them. And even though he goes mini right after, and he's going to be squishy little mini Nar, he goes down. You did your job. Well done, Summit. You got the two carries of the enemy team. The rest of Team Liquid will clean that up. And he knows, job well done. <laughs> Last little bits of that Meganar. Got both carries, and now they've got the Baron. Now they're running away with it. My life for your birthday, Core. That's that's my <laughs> gift to you. As the damage charts, even Harry and Yon. The fact that Yon was kind of blocked out of that fight for the first uh, portion of it, and then just followed through, committing Flash and Gale Force. Uh -oh. oh, but now Core JJ might be in trouble. Yon tries to bail him Happy out, but birthday. he is eviscerated, and Domo is going right onto Yon's face. He takes him out by himself. It's a 1v2 practically for Tomo. Can they soup this one out? It's a huge Mega Nar scoop up by Summit, but it's not enough damage, and now Pioshik is the only man left standing from Team Liquid. Tomo stands up huge on the Aphelios. Is it enough? Pioshik. His smite is coming up. He's got blue buff, no flash. He's not gonna try and do anything fancy there. It's just dragon number two. Everybody calm down. Those are not the huge rewards, but Rafa, that was a huge, huge fight from Dignitas. They are not giving up anything, even with the lead increasing for, for Team Liquid. And even with the Baron just getting taken, yeah. they won't let them run away with it. They keep pulling them back within reaching distance here. And just and yeah, Diamond starts it out. The Q stun into the crash down. They pop poor JJ, even though he has a stopwatch here. Tomo's not gonna let him get away. Fires on him, then goes for the extra 1v1. Is it, wait, this is a 1v2. Uh, yeah, the extra 1v1 was Tomo chasing down <laughs> Yon in the replay. Well, Core JJ is here for the backup. Harry is also arriving as well. Summit on the route. Diamond and Rich and Tomo, the rest of the party shows up. No one goes down, Kobe. I thought we were going to get another brawl, but everyone backs off. They keep it spicy. Team Liquid right back out to it. Two to one on the Dragons, but still a very healthy gold lead for Team Liquid. And they can retake this vision control. Should be, allow them to have some pretty good side lane pushing. 
Now, once again, Hatomo just having the presence of mind that he is able to win the 1v1 against Yan, knowing that he didn't have Featherstorm for the previous fight, nor the Gale Force cooldown either. Just goes in for pretty much total annihilation melee form. And then that's one of the things about Tomo. We have to remind ourselves that, you know, he came up through Dignitas in a pretty, you know, bad situation. Spawn was the starter. It didn't work out for them. They're like, all right, Tomo, you better be you better be better, you know? And there's a couple of wins. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of wins for Dignitas. And it came off of Tomo just having clutch moments in these fights. And the, the one win they've gotten from Summer, Rich was a big highlight. But there's moments where Tomo was dodging out on Ari Charms from Jojo Pion, even outplaying a lot of the EG engages. And Tomo will find ways to clutch out fights, even when you least expect him to. Yeah, he definitely has been big this game, especially on the Aphelios. Still a win condition for them, despite the deficit. He does have his cleanse back and available, but going to be a little bit longer on the flash. Once you have those, then it's actually possible to really outplay this big AOE. Things have gone intense here on the rift. It's still a 3,000 gold lead for Team Liquid, but it doesn't feel out of reach for Dignitas the way that some of these fights have been playing out. It's a slight dragon advantage for Dignitas. We don't have soul for at least another 10 minutes if Dignitas were to get the next two. Baron's coming up in two and a half minutes. And it seems so far that Dignitas are just gonna be playing the vision control game, just handshaking when they get mid prio and moving into the jungle of Team Liquid. Meanwhile, the side lanes I mentioned for Team Liquid, Able to get the push out since we've got the Trinity Force Black Cleaver for Summit. He pushed on bottom very slightly while Annie takes care of topside, and then they're going to try and rotate right on back over. Meanwhile, Dignitas still moving as a full squad. The Scuttle Crab top laner fight also goes to Summit. Wow. And with Core JJ coming within a screen of him, Rich fully respects that Rakan engage, flashes away from it, doesn't want to let him get anything. Does Core JJ stop the recall? Oh, he does. <laughs> Little rascal Core JJ, just uh, making it difficult for Rich to get a proper reset in. We're still about a minute and a half away. Some change for both the Baron and Dragon. And so far, Team Liquid are kind of on the up in terms of trying to control how vision control is established. As you were talking about, because of that side lane pressure from Summit and no flash from Rich, it's harder for him to maintain control of the spot wave. Certainly is. Helps when, when Core JJ's coming around to put the extra vision pressure and the threat of the engage as well. I also love that he's using his Rakan skin as well. And you can see the recall showing it up on his birthday. Meanwhile, the Baron vision, though, has gone all the way of Dignitas. And Team Liquid going to do their part to try and take a bit of that back, some of the retake value. Now for Team Liquid, I know the fans have been enjoying a, a revitalized look for this squad. You know, one of the things that haunted them in spring is early game was always great, but then they could not find a way to close out the mid game. They find an engage on the diamond, but Magnastorm is huge on the three. Can they capitalize? Moonlight Vigil gets a huge chunk, takes out Pyoshik. Summit's about to go mega. Does he want to leap back in? He flashes forward. He scoops on up one of the members of Dignitas, Santorn is taken alive, but Yawn is forced to flash away. The Featherstorm rich with the third Q on the Nintendo <laughs> Strikes, catches him and clips him out. That's the backliner gone for Team Liquid. Here is the le only damage left alongside Summit, but there's still a jungle advantage and a smite advantage for Dignitas. Yeah, and Baron just arrived, or just got started up here. Santorn's kind of low, but they don't care. They're going to be able to, they're going to be able to force that one quickly. Dignitas Baron is actually a dub. What is happening? You know, Dignitas are are showing up today. This is a fight at the top of the table. Rafa, Dignitas here, tooth and nail versus Team Liquid, the undefeated team right now. See if they can change that. But again, the engage here right onto Diamond. We've had multiple of these where TL go full engage onto the rail and try and burst them out. They do go one for one, trading support for jungle though. And then you get the arrival. Tomo is forced to cleanse Gale Force away from the Annie engage, and then he flashes there as well. Meanwhile, the ultimate here from Zai used by Yan and Cassante gets the Cassante finish those things while Jensen in the back line doing the kind of off-screen Oriana work there. 
with the Oriana ball, adding the extra support for the chase down. Yeah, both uh, Jensen and Tomo were in great pockets. After Tomo had to burn both of his summoner spells, no one could get through the front line of Santorin and Rich. And that is one of the things that Team Liquid have to deal with now that it's later on in the game, is Rich almost gets taken out here by the assassination of Harry and Yon. They force him away. They're going to have to defend this top side, though. Yeah, he almost gets taken out, but then he is Summit? Cassante. Ah, uh, Summit, he's going to get a chance to go Mega! He gets pumped by Rich like a balloon! And now Santorin and the rest of Dignitas have a man advantage to keep this Baron push alive. Oh my goodness, Rich Cassante still delivers. Dignitas, they, they want to leave this base in ruins. Annie Tibbers, that's another 50 gold. Thank you very much. What a massive swing for Dignitas. And, and now they're just going to try to go for the end here if they take out Harry. There's only three members left from Ding Liquid. It's two inhibitors gone. They have two empowered cannon minions as well with the Baron buff. They're going to they're gonna keep on pushing. Blue Gun Aphelios wiping the waves. 14 seconds on Summit. Summit would have to go huge here. Yawn and Core JJ, they're playing it briskly, but it's a huge Cyclone Featherstorm combo. Core JJ starts it all off, and Pioshek has a stopwatch to keep himself alive. Simon looking for the engage. He gets popped by Jensen, but it's traded out by Yawn. Looking for the triple and Summit. It's just going to teleport in. He's going to keep and corral Rich and Jensen, but Rich at least summit, separates Summit away from him with the all -off. How does he keep doing this with Cassante? Rich is a beast on this champion. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Rich is not trapped in there with you. You're trapped in there with him. The Cassante ults him away from the team, isolates him and gets the kill. First of all, we have to get away from the engage though. No problem there. Goes all out the first time. First all out, chops him down. Spam of Qs, easy. <laughs> The second one was quite hilarious, though, as this is up against the, the, the next asserts here. This is up against the game end. And Core JJ, Birthday Boy comes in again. It is Rakan set up into Zaya Blade Caller. The Zaya ult lay down all the feathers on top of Core JJ as he goes in, Blade Caller them through. Then the turnaround from Diamond with the crash down plus Orianna damage from Jensen chunks them out. They were threatening the curve. And then it wasn't a full turn because the chunk that they had just gotten out on the rest of the Team Liquid teammates and Summit knows then, ah, Cassante through the wall. Summit's starting to realize, man, this champion's kind of busted, guys. We should. Rich is really good with it too, okay? <laughs> yeah. There are two things that are both true. Yeah, it is busted. Also, Rich is extremely good with it. You know, a lot of the bans that uh, teams have thrown away towards Rich has been things like the, the Gwen, I think uh, another split pusher, I think we saw. I don't remember off the top of my head, but the, the fact that Cassante still managing to be accelerated to its full potential by Rich, I think going forward, teams are going to have to put a lot more respect on this guy when that champion is available, because he has been single-handedly keeping Dignitas alive. There's been great wombos from Dignitas on the back of it, but Rich has been the clutch maker. They look for one more engage. Poor JJ gets a nice grand entrance on the backside of it, and they're trying to take out Jensen. Summit scoops him on up, and Jensen's gone. Poor JJ gets traded on out, but Tomo's still alive, and he's firing right on back. Yawn and Harry are the only ones left standing, but they have to deal with the frontline Rich on top of Tomo and Diamond. And it's a triple for Tomo. Nice kiting there on the Aphelios. Nobody able to lock him down. Now he's got red, white guns, diamonds. And Yawn looking for the cleanse, the Featherstorm. Does he look for one more? The Gale Force forward. Rich looks for the Tofa strikes, but Yawn flashes it, doesn't get clipped, and they have to save the base from going down. Yeah, the, the minions here doing too much damage. They did enough though with that kill onto Diamond to force the rest of them out. Tomo returns. Tomo's finishing that inhibitor off screen. Wonder if he's gonna be able to get it. Magnastorm though, started it out again. This is what we're talking about for Tomo. Look at him kiting back, just on the edge of the Cyclone there. Then he gets pulled in by the Nar ultimate. Immediately returns to chopping them down. Red, white guns. If everybody dives into you and he's got the cleanse, then he's able to keep on firing. Finishes that one off. Looks like he was not able to get that inhibitor during the replay. So he did go back into the base for a little bit. Looks like he was chased out again. So Team Liquid, they've retaken the gold lead technically, but their base is in ruins and they've got to defend their inhibitors. So uh, no way you can go contest any sort of third dragon. Next one will be the soul though. 
And that one will definitely need some action. Yeah, we're at 35 minutes and the gold lead, as small as it is, just means that this is certified banger status between both of these teams. This was unlikely going into the day. One of the top teams against one of the bottom teams, we thought it was just gonna be another stomp, but Dignitas are really pulling out all the stops, maintaining that they can still take on some of the best teams in the league, as the Baron, not even a chance from Team Liquid for a contest. All right, another Baron acquired. Second to Baron for Dignitas. Third one of the game, and 35 minutes in, You've been talking about how many stomps we've been having in the LCS all day long, and this one really delivering, though. Dignitas making that comeback good. Now they're going to be at the gates once again. Top inhibitor has respawned for Team Liquid at least. Try and help out there. But this Baron buff provides so much sieging power. It makes it difficult to clear the minions. And Team Liquid... They really have to rely on Yawn to deal with most of the minions. And it's tough because he has no summoner spells coming up for this next potential fight. If Dignitas force and engage, they know that Yawn will have to play with more respect and cannot aggressively walk forward. Yeah, hard to wave clear for them. So Dignitas can just use that slow pressure to their advantage. Just work your way around the base. Bottom, mid inhibitor, then rotate up to top. Once you get all three, big, big bonus of pressure. Whoa, they're actually just going to go straight onto the Nexus turret. Summit gets chunked out. He's a mini Nar really far away from the big engage. Santorin's trying to mark for JJ on this left side of the flank. He's really gonna have to look for a miracle fight here to catch Dignitas off guard. Tomo still has a flash to play with. Diamond tried to grab an invisible Pioshik with his ultimate there. So now we don't have a Rel ultimate. Good little juke from Pioshik kind of made Diamond flinch. Summit is about to go Mega. Rich is looking for some damage and a knockup, but Summit now has, has access to Mega Nar form. But he doesn't have Flash, so he can't get in range quite yet. He's advancing forward. Core JJ looks for the grand entrance, but it's a flash out from Jensen. And now Team Liquid have to back on up. Santorin threw out the Glacial Prison for the slow. Rich is charging up that third Natoka strike. Moonlight Vigil goes wide. Team Liquid are doing everything they can to defend this Lax Nessus turret from going down. The third Natoka strike clips Yawn, and he's got a Feather Storm, but he doesn't have a flash. This could be the end for Team Liquid. Dingatot, but Tomo gets clipped out. <laughs> Team Liquid, if they just survive, they can withstand the hold. They can withstand the pace. Rich is doing everything he can to clip this win for Dignitas. Jensen is pulling a lot of damage to the back line, but Team Liquid survives! Pioshik is the only one that goes down. He has teleport, I guess. Rich is recoiling right now. Okay. A no. second flank attempt, but this time it's Harry, and Rich is TPing back in. Harry, you gotta be careful about this one. That is a very tanky Cassante, and it's Rich's Cassante. The flash crashed down from Diamond. The Magnus Storm locks up Harry, but Yon, the fellow rookie, is with his back the way through to make sure Harry doesn't go down. They clip out Diamond and oh TL still goodness. fighting! Jensen gets taken out by Summit. This is a banger, baby! TL still fighting here. They will not give up on Core JJ's birthday. Rich is gonna have to make do with just the red buff as their reward. Now they have to deal with doubled up super minions in their base though for quite a while. We're gonna break 40 minutes on this one, baby. Love to see it. Team Liquid being pushed to the brink here. The second undefeated team in the LCS. And Dignitas, they are steps away from giving them their first loss. Look at the scramble here. Tomo got immediately bursted down there. Even with the flash, they were able to get the kill with Wukong. So nice chunk there from Pioshik. They got the summoner spells out of uh, Tomo as well. So we'll have to see about the next fight. But after that, once Tomo's down, Dignitas have to retreat and they can't finish the Nexus. So teleport from Harry wants to get the flank, but we mentioned the teleport from Cassante was coming in too. And they're calling for the turn, Diamond and Rich, but it's a no ultimate Cassante. So he doesn't actually have the damage. He is actually a tank instead of being able to have that all out button. So no DPS behind the turn. Summit is able to get Jensen in the end, but holy. And you can feel the frustration and Dignitas are so close from not only adding another win to their record, but also taking out an undefeated team of the summer so far. That could have been the game ending play and it doesn't go quite their way. And now Summoner Spell's advantage, we talked about it before. Tomo had the flash, this time it's not with him. Yawn has flash advantage this time around, so he gets to play a little more aggressively. 
All right, all about the wave clear. Dragon's Soul is available, by the way. Drag Dragon Soul is sitting there. If they botch this Nexus fight, they will be kicking themselves. But they want to keep up the pressure, it looks like, and play off all the uh, inhibitors being down. Magnastorm available. Diamond does not have flash though, so he can't look for the engage. Up, Pioshik just goes for the flash. The Cyclone engage, run onto Jensen. Santorum peels right on back. Pioshik receives a lot of burst damage, but they take out the front line immediately. But Rich has dealt with Harry into the back line, and he's going for the game. And Rich, can he finish the game by himself? He's got the footwork, but Yon takes him out. Moonlight Vigil, not enough damage. Yon is still alive. He's taking out one by one. The GA pop. Jensen can walk up potentially, but Yon has to deal with two throws. He takes the Board. Just hit the Nexus! Jensen Oriana does it again, Rafa! He picked it finally again. Oh my goodness, what a game! They really had to work for that one, but Dignitas did it. They took down the undefeated Team Liquid. They hand them their first loss of summer with some big plays. Dignitas are already on track of beating their spring record at this pace, and they are delivering on upsets, being one of the teams coming into this split that not many had high expectations for. But the fact that Dignitas are able to walk away with this win, they can keep their heads up high, and man, Rich, you're, you're a beast, buddy. If you keep getting Cassante, I know there are going to be great things for you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's listen in on the comms. Just hit, just hit. Tidal flash. RG here. I'm good. Okay. Just hit the next one. No. He's okay. He's one hit, one hit, one hit, one hit. Just hit next one. No? Oh. Yeah, hit next one. Oh, please. Please! Oh, fucking God. You get one. <laughs> you can drop that one. That one's approved. Yeah. Core JJ tried to get the knock up there at the end, and Jensen just walks forward, doesn't get hit by that knock up. Maybe it's yeah. close on that one because he had like four autos to finish the Nexus, got every single one off there. Uh, definitely an exciting one. Most exciting one of the day, I have yeah. to say. Yeah, uh, definitely a banger. We told you. But for the rest of everyone at home, Guess what? The folks at Sleeper have been hard at work making sure the LCS Fantasy experience is up to quality, that the issues experienced at the beginning of the split have been resolved. So it's not too late to sign up and start a league with your friends, and you can head over to sleeper.com or sleeper.app to give it a try. But for us, we're going to head it over to Emily and Diamond for our Verizon post-game interview. Hello, I am here with the victorious Diamond. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to give you a little moment to process that game. Uh, coming out of it, as you walked on stage, you're like, wow, what a disgusting game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was it like, I guess, being in those ending moments? Like, did the did the fear kind of set in that you wouldn't be able to close it out or what? Yeah, I kind of hit my old friend on me at one point. That, that can tell you <laughs> as, like, what was happening in our head at that point. You know, I mean, we're like, we got the waves. So, like, we know we're going to win if we do nothing. But we're also thinking of the Rakan, like, not showing mm -hmm. the whole time. So I think we kind of lost uh, lost our cool a little bit, but yeah. I mean, we should have won earlier. I kind of played that game pretty bad, honestly, but it's fine. I did want to talk to you about the Royal pick, just because you guys so heavily prioritized it in terms of first picking her. Uh, it feels like some supports, actually both you and Core JJ, and then also who he really highly value her. So especially with the, I liked it with the Oriana combo specifically. Um, so just talk to me about like how you guys ideally would kind of execute that combination um, and why she was such a high prio pick. Well, the champion is a 12-13 abomination, <laughs> like Static Shiv. So she's like 56 win rate or something. The champion is mm -hmm. messed up. So, uh, I mean, we played it. I mean, I think they were going to pick it if we didn't. At least that was our idea. And uh, I think when I started playing in LCS, actually, Rel just came out. That was one of my signature champ at the beginning. And I think Core is also really good at the champs, so it's kind of taking away from them and also playing it. I mean, it's just, it's too OP. The champ is, it's messed up. 
Yeah, I mean, you guys did have one, like, it was at 2730, I wrote it down, uh, where you guys had a really good, like, Rel Oriana combo that kind of set you ahead in the game. Oh, uh, yeah, and the dragon, you right? to go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Um, returning to the LCS stage, obviously, you're reuniting with Tomo a bit because yeah. he, <laughs> he got promoted kind of halfway through. Yeah. What's it like been returning to the LCS for you? Um, It's kind of weird, the timing of it, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like uh, NACL dying and then this happening. So, I mean, it feels good that I get to be here. Like, I'm relieved and I'm uh, grateful for it. But also, it's kind of bittersweet in that way. And um, for me, I think I had, like, some pretty bad games so far in LCS, honestly. And uh, it's just how it goes. I have to get used to it again because the level is way higher than Academy. So, for me, I'll, I'll try my best to get back up. And I think it's good that I went Tomo because we've been together for a little bit. So... Mm -hmm. I, even though we had some breaks in between, so like people say we played together for like two years, but in reality, we played one split break, one split break, yeah. one split break, you know, like so. And then we had another break before I came in. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I still have to like learn more stuff together, even though we're, I could do what has been together for a while, you know? I remember watching you in your initial LCS debut, and obviously that didn't go uh, how you wanted. In returning, yeah. I wanted to ask you how you think you've grown individually as a player uh, in that time between when you did start for FlyQuest and then now starting for Dignitas? Um, I think I definitely got better, but uh, I think you don't necessarily just get better individually, you get better at like covering your teammates' mistakes and like just being a better person. I think mm -hmm. I'm a much better person than I was at the time. So I think like when I first started my career, I always thought like I deserve to be there, I should be there, but now it's more like I'm happy to be here and I wish I can stay here, you know? So that's my personal view on things, you know? So just working hard to be there, you know? Nice. Awesome. Well, congrats. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me. Uh, and we will see you guys on the other side of the break. Thank you, guys. It is kind of funny to us that FlyQuest is 0-4 because we thought that they would be one of the top teams. So, I don't know. We, we just want to make them go 0-6 because that would just be really funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Volk is not that good. Like, he's trash talking, but he's kind of... He doesn't deserve that, so I think swapping teams, you know, we'll see who's who's a better support and like who's actually a problem in the team. Red Bull gives you wings. Red Bull gives you wings. I've got the Samsung 990 Pro Series. Shall we get started then? The speed exceeds all expectations. Reading speeds are 40% quicker than before, and writing speeds are 55% faster. Through the in-house controller, the per watt performance has improved up to 50%. The 990 Pro's nickel coating controller for its smart thermal solution technology controls you. Playing computer games? Obviously the best. 